Hi again then guys, and welcome to the 29th pick. Only one more to go after this in the series of my top 30 wish list for a dream lineup. Not the complete lineup, of course, but a dream lineup of additional vehicles which I would love to see feature on Gran Turismo in the future. Now, for the majority of these, unfortunately, they probably won't make it in. But for one or two, there is a decent chance. And for some, they have at least been featured on other racing games, if not Gran Turismo itself, at some point. And as many of you who have watched many of the videos in this series will have noticed, I like controversial cars. I like cars which most people don't, or that at least many people find a little bit off-putting initially. And in many cases, these cars put me off initially. I didn't like them when I first saw them. My dream car, as many of you know, on the channel is a car which when I first saw it, I didn't like at all, the Ferrari FF. But some cars grow on me over time. We've featured a couple already in this series, such as the Batoni Mantida. This vehicle is similar to vehicles like the Batoni Mantida and also the Devon GTX in a couple of ways. For one thing, this vehicle, which is called the Sparda Vecha Sport Coda Tronca TS, commonly known as the Sparda Coda Tronca, is a car which has, like the Devon and the Batoni, been featured on Forza. And it's due to that game that I actually learned about this car, and that I like this car. Initially, I didn't. I didn't so much dislike it as... I didn't really care about it because I didn't know anything about it. It was a weird looking car. What did it really bring to the table that any other supercar didn't? But over time, it grew on me, as the Devon and especially the Batoni did. And this car is a very interesting supercar. Unfortunately, it is only a concept in this particular form. The company has made a couple of different versions of the Coda Tronca, most notably the TS, which is this version, the version which I would like to see on Gran Turismo, and also an updated open top version called the Coda Tronca Monza, which is more powerful, has quicker acceleration, a slower top speed due to the aerodynamics, but also, as far as I'm aware, did not make production. So, an unfortunate car overall, but at the same time, I'm not really surprised that it didn't become a production supercar, because especially visually, its styling is very niched, and it will for sure only appeal to certain people. Now, when you look at the car, you may see certain elements that you might recognise, such as elements from older cars such as the second-generation split-window Corvette. And there's a reason for that. The people who designed that car also designed this one, or elements of it. And this car is made in Italy, and it's based, funnily enough, like the Batoni Mantida, on a Corvette. A sixth-generation Corvette, it uses a modified version of the Z06's engine, and interestingly, it actually combines elements of the ZR1 and the Z06. Namely, it has the size and sheer capacity of the Z06 with the power of the ZR1, because the ZR1 is actually a smaller engine than the Z06, a 6.2 litre, compared to the 7 litre of the Z06. This uses the 7 litre engine, and power is increased to 630 horsepower, and the torque to just under 500 pound-feet. A pretty decent initial spec, then. It's got a six-speed manual gearbox, and weighs in at less than 1,400 kilos, which is pretty decent, given that this is not a stripped-out track day special. This is, to all intents and purposes, a very well-made car. It's luxurious, it's classy, and it is, it has to be said, very well built. There is a real feel of quality with this car. Not like some other supercars which feel almost as though too much effort is put into the styling and not enough is put into the actual quality of the build and the components used. That is not the case with this car. It's a very high quality vehicle. And looks aside, 
it's extremely fast. 0-60 arrives in about 3.3 seconds, and it has a top speed of 211 miles per hour. So it is a true supercar. And interestingly, one of the reasons why it has the back-end design that it does, that kind of almost shooting brake design, similar to vehicles like the Ferrari FF, which is probably another reason why I ended up liking this car, is actually due to aerodynamics. It was found many decades ago that a flat back design, almost like a, a semi-van kind of shape, is actually superior aerodynamically for stability at high speeds. And that can be proven by the fact that this is the less powerful version, but is still faster than the open top due to that roof design. A top speed of 211 puts it on par with the Lamborghini LP640, and for acceleration, it's on par with the Zonda Cinque. That's pretty decent, and although it never left the concept stage, which is, I think, highly unfortunate, it would still be a very, very useful supercar to have on the game. And let's not forget, around the track, the 6th generation Corvette is a very, very good car. The Z06 and the ZR1 are a lot better than non-Americans would like to admit. And this car carries that over. It's lighter than the Corvette and has more power, is superior aerodynamically, and has a pretty good chance, I would say, of being a superior track machine. Now, on Forza, specifically Forza 4, the top speeds and acceleration times that vehicles can achieve are actually a lot more realistic than Gran Turismo. A lot of Gran Turismo fans and fanatics will probably not want to admit that, especially those that have never played Forza. Because although Gran Turismo may have a, a more realistic physics engine in terms of handling, and I'm not necessarily going to argue that, the speeds that cars can achieve on Gran Turismo, and not just GT6, but any GT game, are completely unrealistic. On Forza, specifically, again, Forza 4, the cars are much more realistic. It takes a lot of power to get a car to be seriously quick. Even the fastest cars in the game pretty much never exceed 275 miles per hour, and that's even with an upgraded Hennessy or Bugatti Veyron Supersport. That's realistic, because at those kind of speeds, it does require a massive amount of power to even increase your performance by just a few miles per hour because of the air resistance. Especially considering that on Forza 4, there is no high-speed test track like the one that we have on Gran Turismo in the form of Special Stage Route X. This car on Forza, even with those far more realistic top speeds, can still achieve, in fully tuned form, a top speed of around 250 miles per hour. That's actually not far off what it would actually be capable of. Considering that it already does 211 from a 630 horsepower spec, it's actually not outlandish to say that it could go that fast. The Corvette has proven time and time again that it is a fantastic base car to work from in terms of tuning and straight line performance. Numerous companies have proven that. Lingenfelter, Hennessy and a variety of others have taken Corvettes to incredible speeds. Factor in a lower weight and superior aerodynamics and this car could quite easily break 250 miles per hour if you gave it enough power, as you are allowed to do on Forza, if I remember correctly, in excess of 1,000 horsepower, which is also not unrealistic at all for a 7-litre Z06 engine to produce. Were it on Gran Turismo, 1,000 horsepower may not be quite possible, because the Z06 of the 6th generation that we currently have on the game can be tuned to 919 horsepower. This car may get a little bit more, considering it has more to begin with, but not that much more if Gran Turismo continues the Z06 engine's tuning limitations. If, however, they treat it more like a ZR1, then we could get an excess of 1,000 horsepower out of it. With a full weight loss package, you're looking at easily 1,200 kilos, if not just under, 
and overall a PP of, I would say in excess of 650, wouldn't be at all surprising to me, even without a flat floor. In effect, you'd have one of the best obscure supercars you could actually add to Gran Turismo. Because it's not just a car which shows up at random events and looks good, it's one which can actually back up those strikingly unique looks with actual dominating performance. Again, like the Batoni Mantida and the Devon GTX. Overall, as far as how it would fit into the game, well, it's fairly obvious. The Corvette in both Z06 and ZR1 forms, and also the C7 Stingray to some degree, are very popular cars on Gran Turismo 6, and they're very useful cars. They make fantastic drag cars, top speed racers, and circuit racing machines at a variety of power and PP levels. So to say that this car would be really good on Gran Turismo is quite the understatement. I think it would be a fantastic car, at least as good as those Corvettes, probably even better. As far as PP and price, the stock PP would probably be similar to the ZR1. I didn't look that up before this video, so I can't recall what it is at the moment, but whatever kind of area that the ZR1 is, that's probably the kind of PP that this car would have, maybe a little bit more due to its better aerodynamics and slightly superior weight. As far as its maximum tuned PP, as I said, easily over 650, maybe even more. And as far as price, I would personally like to see this car, if it were ever to make it on Gran Turismo, which is doubtful, to say the least. I would like to see it have a price of, say, 400 or 440,000 credits, something like that. That's the rough kind of price that would seem appropriate to the look of the car, it looks like a £400,000 supercar to me. Whether or not it would have been, we don't know. Whether or not it'd be useful on Gran Turismo, we do know. It may not be on the game, but it definitely would be a great supercar. So, that's it overall for this particular pick, the Sparta Vetra Sport or SVS Coda Tronca TS concept. And if you are new to the channel, Feel free to slap down below what cars you would personally love to see on Gran Turismo. Maybe a car which has been featured on another game, such as this one, which was featured on Forza and a couple of other games. Maybe something completely new, some obscure classic race car or a modern concept. Who knows? Could be anything. And everyone has certainly unique tastes. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.